Stories of the dead who came back to hunt the living have been part of the most common and vibrant traditions throughout Finland and Karelia. Stories about deformed, headless corpses can be found almost everywhere in this region. Also typical to this region are stories of seers and of grave folk, people who have been given or obtained the ability of seeing the dead. So grab a shovel, grab a lantern, and join me tonight as I delve deep into the lifeless, limbless, decaying depths of Finnish folklore. Seers of the Dead These seers sense the presence of the dead, or grave folk, and could obtain information during their ecstatic experiences on future events, particularly forthcoming deaths. Seeing the dead is described as a frightening experience, of course. The dead or grave folk have mostly been experienced as a mass coming towards the seer and completely filling his or her consciousness. They would also throw around the seer and causing him to enter a kind of trance or epileptic state. The dead described by the seers have also been headless or even sometimes limbless. One could become a seer against one's will by being startled by a corpse or by being contaminated by death from an object or piece of clothing polluted by a corpse. The seer may have unwittingly donned an item of clothing worn by a dead person or slept in a bed which a corpse had lain. It was also possible to obtain the gift of seeing by washing one's eyes with corpse soap. Soap that had been used to wash a corpse or that had been made from fat from a human corpse or with some other substances that had been in contact with the corpse. Sometimes grave folk had been appeared as a punishment for dishonouring or insulting the deceased. For example, if the seer has strayed into the burial ground while drunk. Commonly, people would think that seers of the dead were a little bit strange, tending towards witchcraft or even sometimes mentally ill. Now what about these grave folk? In stories that spread from Scandinavia to Western Finland, the dead are described as horrible, headless, missing limbs and mouldy. In the visions of the stories, deformed grave folk rise from below ground or wander towards the seer. Some are headless, without arms or legs, their face are shrouded in mould, their flesh is hanging off their bones. The details have been embellished in many, many ways. In the era of early hunting cultures, a dead body has not been an object of religious treatment for the Finns. But the remains may have been left unburied for wild beasts or dogs or perhaps placed high up on a platform on pillars or in a tree, as was the custom of many northern peoples. In shamanistic thinking, it was of prime importance that the soul of the deceased was freed into its new form and was able, perhaps, in the form of a bird, to travel to the realm of the dead, Tuonela, or the underworld, to await reincarnation. Dead lived or wandered in different layers of the universe. Apparently very early is also the idea that the realm of the dead was situated beyond water, such as the river of Tuonela, either under the ground or far away in the north at the end of the world, where the canopy of the heavens met the sea. The underground world of Tuonela has often been described as the mirror image of the world of the living. It was in a shadow world, such as that reflected in water. Grave goods became increasingly richer also in Finland. The dead were probably dressed in their finest clothes and given food, utensils, or at least their own weapons and personal jewellery. The deceased were equipped not only for the journey to Tuonela, but also for getting by on the other side. In communities all over Finland, it was the ancestral cult that posed a sort of competing ideology, a counter-religion to those Christian churches of the time. In the course of the centuries, as the churches constructed a new society, almost everything that had been part of pre-Christian ideas of the dead was interpreted as paganism or worship of false gods. The change in the meanings of the ancestral cult affected everything from funeral customs to folklore, stories of the dead and people who had encountered them. 
In centralized cemeteries, the deceased lost their personality and kinship. The dead were grave folk, symbols of collective fear. It was said also that cemeteries and churches were visited by witches at night. Corpse, earth and bones of the dead were the most fearsome tools of black magic, which the devil's servants kept in their witching pouches. Stories of the dead returned to haunt the living. Malevolent dead were those who had not made it to the other side, or of whom no one had taken care of. They had been excluded from their cultural order. Unidentified and neglected dead, in common with criminals or people disowned by their kin, became evil spirits, restless souls, who searched for their share or atonement for their deeds among the living. The deceased were looked after, not only because the ancestors helped their successors, but in order that the dead would be able to manage in their own realm and not come back to demand their share, to haunt or cause evil to the living. It was imperative to get back to one's own village after death. The greatest misfortune was to have no relatives or to be abandoned by one's kin. In Karelia, there is a term known as the bad dead. They were buried in an exceptional way, for example, without a coffin and ceremonies, away from others or left unburied altogether. They were likened to a dead stranger, a person unknown in the locality of whom no one took care of, and who therefore was not thought to have managed the journey to the realm of the dead. The displaced dead were kind of left halfway, in an internal transitional stage. They haunted the living, looking for their final rest and place in various ways. In Finnish folklore, the concept of the dead without resting places has referred to the dead who were not believed to have an earth place, no place on earth or in heaven. The problem of such dead is not only religious, but also social. In cultural terms, one could talk about the dead without status, who could not be included in the category of the dead in the normal way. Thus, the dead without resting places were without status in the dual society of the living and the dead. They were in an internal transit or passage stage, a liminal state, comparable to the purgatory of the Catholic Church. <laughs>